today. We've got lots to lots to discuss, but I would love to start with um, some intros uh, and maybe a little bit about the project you're working on or company you're working with. So, James, do you want to kick us off? Uh, hello again. I'm James. Uh, I founded a, a sort of marketing consultancy brand culture business called Iconic. Um, we try and give brands a cue jump to the front of popular culture. Very excited to be here. Hi there, I'm Marina. I am an entrepreneur and an advisor, and occasionally I wear an investor hat as well. Uh, my project includes uh, London Fashion Fund, which is investing in uh, sustainability uh, companies in fashion space. And um, uh, my recent projects also were uh, I created accelerators for blockchain protocol called NewCoin. And one of the biggest projects is I was uh, one of the founding members for Farfetch Accelerator, um, which is the biggest um, company for uh, fashion innovation. So that's me. And I'm Erica. Obviously. And I'm Max, Growth Director of Human Protocol. And my background is in products and communities. Hi everyone, I'm Ross, the CEO at RANS. We have the largest NFT marketplace on our RANS, about 80 to 90% market share. So all the NFT volume that passes through our RANS generally passes through us. We've also got the largest, or the fastest growing NFT marketplace on XRPL. Great, thank you. Can all the panelists hear one another? Just. You know, just, yeah. okay, yeah. perfect. Well, let me know if you can't turn the volume up. Um, so although we might not call it that, decentralized work has become a lot more common since the pandemic with whole companies going remote or mixing remote with in-office work. What can we learn from that kind of tussle between the old guard and the new guard there? Um, and, and how is uh, sort of decentralized work working in, in this new sphere with Web3? Who wants to start? <laughs> I can go. I can, I can start, but we are, well, we started the business three years ago in the middle of the pandemic, so we didn't have a choice. We had to start uh, remote first, and then the decision was made to keep being remote as we grew and scaled the team over the next three years. Um, you know, frankly, if you look at Web3, there are not enough developers for us to really just hone in on one location. Like, you know, there's maybe one chain that has over a thousand developers. So for us to acquire the best talent, we need to have that remote first approach, I believe. Uh, and then you need to then put, make sure you hire the right people, firstly, but also put the right systems in place to be able to grow and uh, manage those teams on a remote from a perspective. Mm -hmm. I can mention like what, it, what it's, I'll tell you what's working. Um, as long as we've connected the business objectives to what we're building as product and promoting, that's working really well. And so we've now obviously had a decentralized task force building this, but it was really hard to keep this going as our side hustle on top of being, you know, whatever our jobs were as our front hustle. So now we've kind of centralized this group We've gotten really clear on what we're working on, and so we feel centralized, but we've built decentralized tenants into the business models that we're deploying. I think the thing that's not working at times and where we have tensions is we do work for an organization that wants to put up quarterly results. Mm. And so they want to see us exploiting what the opportunity is right now. And yet we built this trust with the community, and our business model in Web3 is really challenged right now because the secondary royalties that we were using dried up about a year and a half ago when Blur and OpenSea changed their policies. And so I think there are some things that are, that are broke in Web3, and so we're having to pivot into gaming worlds and closed ecosystems, which are challenging our original value statement and mission statement. So we're having to find this right balance. Um, and I think at the same time, we as a collective community need to agree on the, the values that we want to stand for. And even if the business models are under attack, we need to try to find ways to still reinforce why Web3 exists. Otherwise, we're probably going to need to become a traditional Web2 gaming studio in the future if we can't find the right revenue streams. 
I think it depends also what sort of business do you run, yeah. and then decentralization can only work on a certain scale. So you can't. I think like it's really challenging to be completely decentralized for a company. Obviously, there are uh, very native Web3 companies who are trying to do that, such as protocols, but um, they are also finding it pretty challenging. And it's quite a new phenomenon, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, the DAOs and uh, the whole decentralization started a couple of just years ago. And because also blockchain is such a new mm -hmm. early stage innovation, there, is a lot of, there are a lot of tools that are developing right now. And uh, actually this year was all about infrastructure and about like what tools can be developed for DAOs and decentralized business models. But I think it will take a bit of a time before those tools can work. And mm. obviously it, uh, it's, it's really important to understand what do you want to achieve with the decentralization as you mentioned yeah. as well. I think there is definitely a need for that, mm. uh, that companies are moving towards more impact and um, more kind of like decentralized decision making mm. and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just think you've just got this tension point. I might be slightly contrary actually to a lot of the opinion. I think you have a tension point between unbelievable convenience seamlessness, you can get the job done, tech orientated, get it licked, have that conversation in whichever video based format you want to. And there is an efficacy and an efficiency to that. But I think the tension point is between that and a bunch of intangibles that is a really human connection thing yeah. that can't be sussed or solved through your little square window. Because all of these bits of body language, which we are currently conveying and portraying, are really important, I think, with the way you deal with people full stop. I don't know anyone who's got this lit, by the way, or solved entirely. I think we all have versions of it. I built an agency in my 20s that I didn't think it, I didn't set it out this way, but it had a gang mentality. The crew of people around you, physically, literally around you, meant that you felt like you could do anything. You could, oh, you had an audacity which was born from your little crew and your tribe. Mm. I just believe they're more difficult to attain in a decentralized model. And yet the tension exists because yeah. there were other times when we tried to go global back then pre-pandemic many years ago. And actually it was prevented because we only had a couple of days stateside and then it was followed up with a conference call. And that was horrid. And that would be so much easier to seamlessly do now in a far more obviously decentralized post-pandemic way. So if anyone's got it entirely licked, I think fair play. It's a very tricky little balance in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I think from what I've learned from six year plus in blockchain and decentralization is that vision should be a bit centralized. And I think you still have to get people to believe in something in common and also to have leaders. In, I mean, leaders can be, that can be one person, but that could be also a collective of persons. Uh, and then execution should be decentralized. And I think people kind of enjoy being able to mm. execute in a decentralized way. And, I, and they feel respected and they feel empowered. But you don't get to get anything done without a beautiful vision mm -hmm. that makes people believe in you and want to go to war for you. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the depths of such a decentralized system and the natural leadership occurs, educate me because you know far more, is it that... <laughs> Do people naturally respond to such leadership yeah. in yeah. a way that would seem yeah, yeah, normal? Yeah, and, and, and that's the beauty of it. Because if you think about it, a light paper is centralized. Someone's, someone at some point decided to write something and say, this is my vision of the world. Please yeah. read it and tell me if you, if yeah. you agree on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much how things are going in, in this world. And this pretty pretty much organic. Obviously, we can talk about token price, so, 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 things like that. But I, I don't want to talk about that. I just want to talk about the ability of people to read something, get their head around it, and just say, you know what, I'm going to make it my day-to-day -day life for the next years. Mm -hmm. and, and this is amazing. But at some point, people need to go back to this feeling of this was a centralized vision that I believed in. And most of the time, people are getting lost in their in the way, organization getting lost in their way because you start with this kind of ideal and you end up getting as as you as you said, like what what's your cue for um, mm. you know uh, performance? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And 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 a lot of people that are here for the beauty of this new world are lost because that that's not the same language. And and I will say 
to put into practice something that I'm saying. Even though you allow execution to be decentralized, let's take, for instance, once we got in the space, a lot of people started to design their own sneakers. Mm -hmm. And they started to share a bunch of memes and their own designs they've done in Clo, in, in um, Illustrator, and share that on Discord. <clears throat> We're a big company who's still governed by Web2. So if we all of a sudden took that and went and built it, we could enter ourselves into a legal situation because we are a Web2 company True. at the end of the day. And so if you share any concepts with me on the Discord, we legally have a right to own it without any agreement because that's now the legal language we had to put out there from our lawyers because we are a centralized and very regulated body of business. However, when we see some of this badass community work and there are some really cool creatives and we said, well, fuck, that's kind of better than some of our stuff. Mm -hmm. We've plucked people out of the community and given them jobs. So there are mm -hmm. folks in the studio now that we pulled out of the team because their execution was yeah. so flawless. And so we cent centralized them, if you will. <laughs> and we've now protected them and given them even more ran runway within Adidas. And that's one of the, that's one of the benefits yeah. of Web3, right? Yeah. Like, um, you to get you know sometimes people often ask say how do I get into Web three? It's actually not that hard. Just join a Discord and be useful. Yeah. And the more useful you are, <laughs> please be useful. Uh, the the, That's the it. more likely things are going to happen. And I own an NFT marketplace. We've we've launched over a thousand creators. I have a huge pool of talent globally who really want to make a name for themselves. They're, they're, they're working full time in Web three and they're contributing. And we've given loads of them. Lots of projects. Some of them work for us, you know, semi full time, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been it's been really mm -hmm. great to to have that talent come to us. Yeah. So, so, so you two, are, sorry, to, I was just going to say what you're both describing there, which I love, and I've not considered it like that. It's almost like this two state solution for decentralized and centralized. The way you're describing, you've got the limitless pool, you've got the convenience, you can access anyone anywhere in any country on the planet, but when we want to, we can pull them into little hubs or nodes that are ultimately centralized and brand endorsed or yeah. creatively fueled. So both act together and operate together. Yeah. I yeah. love that, I've not considered well, we're, that. We're a centralized entity, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it just is similar to, similar to Adidas. Um, but you're quite right, like what you were saying at the beginning where it's, so, it's great when it works, yeah. but when it doesn't work, you, you do need that sort of face to face time and the management team needs to meet up or the whole team needs to meet up so you yeah. can just feel yeah. and you can actually get things done. You know, we've had a few oh shit moments um, <laughs> over the last few years yeah. where it's been like, we just need to get together and we need to be in a room. We need to thrash this out. That's mm -hmm. obviously the, the core team. Um, but it's difficult to replace that. It's, when it's interesting how it started to develop the, the whole decentralized or DAO space as well. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, there is a research that shows that it does really work for some business models. Like I looked into fashion industry, for example, quite a lot. And your example of creators, um, you know, where um, everyone can contribute towards the design. And I think it's, it's one of the really good examples for, mm -hmm. for decentralization. But also I looked into accelerator business models. I, in my opinion, I feel like when you create an accelerator, it, it has so many points who have to contribute, who, who uh, lots of, lots of uh, um, agents that work together, such as mentors, investors, scouts, and um, that could be also a really great way to incentivize everyone. Um, and obviously, like, there are already some other business models. There are quite mm -hmm. a few investment DAOs investors get together and they make a decision together invest in one startup so i do i'm really fascinated about how the space is going to develop because yeah. as i mentioned there is definitely need but let's talk about when it can go really really bad mm. <laughs> let's like it because i've thought about this too like when could it go wholly wholly off the rails <laughs> goat rodeo <laughs> A goat rodeo could be when the people that are the baddies maybe buy up all of your tokens and take control, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And start to, let's say you put rights into your collection and now all of a sudden the baddies have bought up your NFTs and they are doing a bunch of bad stuff and making mm -hmm. negative content and mm -hmm. let's say contributing to world chaos and discourse mm -hmm. using your brand or your iconography because you put it on chain. <coughs> I don't think we've seen it happen, but that's the stuff that keeps me up at night where I'm like, that could happen. 
And there are communities that have high value. Let's, let's say like, you know, Board Ape Yacht Club could be one. They've put the rights out there. Mm-hmm. So what, ha- what do they own? They own a skull logo. But what <laughs> happens if like 9,999 apes all of a start, a sudden start creating content contributing to some world event that's happening? That's a really scary thought. So mm-hmm. is that always going to be where brands are got? So Richard Welsh from Decent Partners, who's here somewhere, was talking about this yesterday and he was... He was referencing, I think, you know, the Dow mentality full stop, but many instances where you're seeing people get burnt or even overthrown and that seemingly lovely level, uh, headed levelness yeah. of a system is suddenly at odds. Will that mean brands, and you're representing one right now, are always going to be guarded? Much in the way that 10 years ago, a brand wouldn't want to do a piece of UGC because a bunch of people would start sending in dick pics. Yeah, our, our <laughs> legal our legal lease on the stuff we do in Web3 is probably longer than the marketing copy by 10x. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because the lawyers have like also gone down these dark alleys with me and we've had these long conversations and you're trying to mitigate against these types of risks that could yeah. happen in these decentralized worlds. Same with uh, the, the way DAOs are structured, right? So the word DAO is decentralized autonomous organizations. The reality is... There's some DAOs out there, there are none of those words. Um, but that autonomous piece is very interesting, right? So can anyone put, to, put forward a proposal? Mm. And then can that just be voted on, mm. right? Yeah. So we're launching a token next year. Part of the utility of that token is governance. So we think about, okay, well, what if someone, anyone can put together a proposal? And what if that's voted? And is that negative towards our business and the future of the business? So, yeah. you know, we're moving from centralized to decentralized, but... How do, we, how do we manage that? And yeah. you know, we, have, we don't have all the answers to that right yet. I think one example when DAOs or decentralized organization fail is when uh, nobody can actually make a, you know, like autonomous decision. So yes. there are a lot of people yes. who are in the DAO and they sometimes don't even vote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there is no decision towards yeah. the end. So that's one yeah, of the Yeah, but most of the time also the thing is uh, there's a cultural misalignment yeah. between people because mm-hmm. um, DAOs are supposed to be governance bodies uh, and most of the time Web2 people are expecting people to be business oriented yes. and to have a huge business acumen but most of the time these people are just DJs, you know just wanting to do some cool stuff online and yeah. then have you know get a drink so it's very hard for people that are really trying to push a business forward to put time and effort in creating with legal, because also in crypto, most of the time legal is running marketing. Mm. You have to. <laughs> yeah, that. true. Um, very so true. it's very hard for people that are putting effort to then see people saying, no, oh, they're too long, don't read. I don't yeah. want to vote on that. Yeah. So let me get a bribe from someone who has covered, covered an interest on that to get all the votes and make sure that the project goes their way. <laughs> that, that, that's quite challenging, but I guess we're a bit running out of time, so. We are, but I would be really interested to um, hear from the panel kind of which issues related to work and employment you'd like to see solved by technology. This could be a one word, little little thought for the future. We've got. Sorry, Can what was you the question? Yeah, you didn't hear the question. What problems would you like to see solved in kind of work and employment by technology? What, which, which bits of work do you think we just need to apply tech to? Mm. And, you know. I, I can start with that. So, uh, and it's one of the reasons I started the business, one of the reasons I got into Web3 is that talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity is not, right? Yes, I've heard that before. Um, I didn't come up with it. <laughs> uh, but like that, deep in my core, mm. that's what pushes me every day to get up, and that's what I'm trying to instill as sort of a, a high-level value and vision for the business, mm-hmm. is that we are empowering folks from around the world. There are folks who work on our platform and make money on our platform, enough money to not have to work on anything else. Mm. We've launched over a thousand creators from Indonesia to Turkey mm. who, and we've transformed their lives and that feels good, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so equality is, is the word for me. Mm. Yeah. Equality. I think as a brand, in order to get other brands in, I think governance is important and I think there could be some ways in which you have your brand guidelines protected, you have a way for people to maybe get credit for the things that they are creating and there needs to be maybe a a system and tools where we can have an information exchange that's not just discord. 
I mean, I would love to see us not just have to use Discord as the only tool. Um, please, can someone help, like, streamline the exchange of information and content out of just a Discord for sake? Um, that, to me, would be really helpful because I want to look at creative. I want to be able to get find these, these awesome, this cool shit that's being made and king make and queen make those individuals. Um, but right now that's difficult. And I also think I want to give them some sort of rights that then can be rescinded if needed. Because yeah. if they are baddies out doing bad stuff, I want to be able to remove that opportunity from them. Yeah, totally. I was, I was going to say, I don't want to be on a down note, I think <laughs> mental health. I think, mm. you know, I was very much at the vanguard of social media and I have an almost guilt complex that frankly the shit that social caused for a generation of kids, teenagers, and the problems that were seemingly just kind of circumnavigated conveniently by the biggest tech platforms. Mm. As often is the case, it's almost for the next generation and the next generation of tech to fix the problems of the past. And I think the opportunity here is for some brilliant opportunity and ability to solve that massive mental health crisis caused by addictions to Instagram and so on. Mm. I wouldn't say that's a down note, I'd say a hopeful note, <laughs> hopeful note for the future. Um, but I think we're going to have to end there. I feel like this could have rolled on for another 20 minutes at least. But thank you so much to all the panellists and Erica for your keynote. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.